Remember when there was a reality TV show that was purposely fake? Who would have thought putting on Molly's underwear would be fun? I mean, but it is very freeing. No Let's go back. Tamagotchi, the of Y2K. The year is 2003. The Return of the King wins 11 Oscars, including Best Picture. Kids are letting it rip with Beyblades. And the United States finds a hobo living in a hole, causing the country to start calling French fries Freedom Fries, or something like that. Lance Armstrong wins his fifth tour to freedom, and Arnold Schwarzenegger becomes the governor of California, two men who will surely never be disgraced. Ay. A massive power outage plagues America, but that doesn't stop Spike TV from making its debut, and one of the shows that premiered in September was The Joe Schmo Show. Spike TV was dubbed the television network for men, and it was the pinnacle of early 2000s trash TV. Has it aged well? Absolutely not. But there was something about television in the early 2000s. It was like the Wild West for reality television. You could get away with stuff that you couldn't get away with today. And one example of that is The Joe Schmo Show. The concept of the Joe Schmo show was contestants went on a reality show that was similar to Big Brother, but they lived in a giant mansion. However, every contestant was an actor, except one. The show was dubbed as a social experiment. But this was about as much of a social experiment as the kids who were licking stuff in grocery stores for that TikTok clout. This was one of those obscure shows that stuck with me throughout my life. I don't know why, but I've always remembered the Joe Schmo show. So I'm excited to rewatch the first episode with all of you and see how well it holds up. Let's get into it. So the show begins when we meet Joe Schmo himself, Matt. Matt had recently dropped out of law school and moved into his parents' house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was spending his weekends delivering pizza and playing basketball. They are not doing Matt any favors with that introduction. We're introduced to the nine actors and the roles they'll be playing. You have the quintessential reality show archetypes. The asshole, the virgin, the gay guy, and Dr. Pat. Hold up. I do not remember Kristen Wiig being in this. I assumed this was going to be a group of actors that we never heard from ever again. So I looked it up. This was less than two years before Kristen Wiig would debut on Saturday Night Live. Okay, so we've met the cast and it's time for this experiment to begin. The first person to arrive is of course Matt so that we can see each interaction he has with all the actors. Pretty pimp, huh? If I was blind, I'd be able to tell Matt was white. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything else weird. The dirty dirty. Oy. So I don't mean to pause again, but I had to because I noticed this guy that's playing Hutch looked very familiar. And I was right, he's actually Cricket from It's Sunny in Philadelphia. Mind blown again. Now when the women start to arrive, Matt begins to say some questionable things in his diary sessions. That, wow, I'm like a hot blonde girl, you know? I'd like to get to know her. <laughs> I mean, as female-wise. Well, at least he didn't say anything racial. I have no problems, you know, with, uh hooking up with other races or anything like that. Oh no, Matt. Well, at least it can't get any worse. You're gay, huh? <laughs> Matt, what are you doing? So the cast begins to enter the house, and Matt is one of the last ones to enter, so he's forced to share a bed with the military guy and Dr. Pat. Matt immediately makes a beeline to Kip's room and apologizes, and shows his affection for the gay community. I'm down with it, you know? Alright, Matt, it sounds like you're more down with it than we thought. The first competition begins. In this game, they have to switch underwear with another housemate. They model it, and then everyone guesses whose underwear belongs to who. This is going to involve some serious censoring on my part. Matt says some more inappropriate things, which becomes a reoccurring thing in this episode. I think that Molly should be proud of her body, because I am, you know? Let's get a couple shakes up there. Let's get a couple shakes up there. Now the men are wearing the women's underwear, which I don't think I can show any of their runway walks. Especially Brian's. Perfect. The breathable fabric provides a comfortable fit and the finest fashion. If you want to imagine it, which I don't know why you would, just imagine a walrus flossing. Kip comes out naked. Come on, Kip, baby, work it. Kip, Kip. This is the style for you. And when it's Matt's turn, he tells us how he prepared for it. I was worrying about size down there a little bit, you know. I didn't want to, you know, look all small on TV. <laughs> so I tried to tug on it. No. <laughs> no, I did play with it a little bit, though, to get the size up. 
<laughs> I swear this video writes itself. And the way he says it as a joke when it's not a joke, he would be terrible in court. The judge would be like, so can you uh, tell us what happened that night? And Matt would be like, well, I stabbed him like 15 times. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I did strangle him to death. So what Matt doesn't know is this game is rigged and he's meant to lose. The loser has to wear the winner's underwear for the day. And Kip wins and chooses what underwear he'll wear. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> now that they're beginning to settle in, Earl settles in a little too much. Earl fucks up by saying he didn't know who the fish underwear belonged to. But Earl, the fish underwear belonged to you. Wait, which ones did you think were The fishing. Mine? Those were yours. Those were yours. Kristen Wiig swoops in and saves the day. Such a professional. No, no, no. You're no, mixing no. up the Santa with the fishes. You're thinking the Santa ones had fish. Well, I don't have them. my contacts or glasses in. Those weren't fish. No, they no, were no, Santa no, no, no. hats. You had, the, you had the blue one with the big fish in the front. Earl knows he'll never work in Hollywood again. Next up is dinner, where it's established that Kip can't swim, and Hutch begins to go in as his role of the asshole by saying some uncomfortable things at the table. Matt decides to meet Hutch in the pool after dinner and explain he needs to chill, and he's getting on the other house guest's nerves. But the conversation takes a turn as the two connect on something they both love to do. Thank you. I masturbate. You, <laughs> you masturbate. Do you not masturbate? I, I do. I want to hear you say it. I masturbate. All right. I so, moving on, Matt has a sit down with Dr. Pat. Kristen Wiig is playing Dr. Pat as a marriage counselor who has been married three times, and Matt asks her about it. My first marriage, I was very young, and I married someone really young and he was a car stereo installer and it just i got married too young it's right. just the case of getting married too young kristen wig really explains herself well out of those three marriages it even convinced me and it's only day one so you have to work up to the craziness that will be dr pat the group gets together to share their personal comfort items that they brought from home and honestly i'm just going to skip over this whole segment the only notable thing is that dr pat brings out her therapy puppets I like to think Kristen Wiig's therapy puppets is what inspired Bill Hader's therapy puppet sketch on SNL. Matt forms an alliance with Gina, and then later with Ashley. The producers want Ashley to form an alliance with Matt so that she can screw him over in the end, because she's playing the rich bitch. The next game is for the immunity robe, and it has the most incredible name for a game ever. It's a little game we like to call Hands on a High-Priced Hooker. We're introduced to Tanya. <laughs> it says the hooker under her name. That is one hell of an IMDb credit. The hooker in question is actually porn star Tawny Roberts. I know this because I googled her. For research purposes only, of course. Well, I think I found the thumbnail for this video. Gotta get those views any way I can. Hello, pervs who clicked on this. Welcome to my channel. The game is simple. They'll draw to see where they put their hand on the <clears throat> hooker. The first person to let go has to sleep in the laundry room, and the last person to let go gets immunity. You know how they do with the contest to win a car? This is one of the rare times you'll see a show turn a woman into a literal object. Matt draws his hand on her right breast. Then she takes off her bikini top. They actually show this too in the episode, by the way. I don't remember there being nudity allowed on Spike TV, but here we are. This video is definitely getting demonetized. And remember, there is no leaning on the hooker table. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. Ready. Set. Touch that hooker! There are some classic television game show lines, like The Price is Right's Come On Down or Millionaire's Is That Your Final Answer? I personally would like to nominate this phrase as one of those iconic television lines. Touch that hooker! The plan for the competition is to have the game come down to Matt and Hutch. However, Matt does something unexpected that leaves the producers scrambling. Hey, sharing that bed is ridiculous, and I won't do it another night. <gasps> Holy mackerel! You're you kidding me! I heard you like. Now that Matt is out, Hutch plays up the asshole role even more by bullying Kip into leaving the game, and then Molly by saying she's sitting right now since she's playing the religious virgin. Hutch has declared the winner and can't be voted out this week. After the competition, Ashley finds Gina's notes under Gina's bed. On there is a list of all the other contestants, and beside their names are some unfortunate notes. Ashley basically tells the whole house, and this sets up Gina's future eviction. Later on, Kip decides they should do a competition to impersonate each other. Okay, let me let me think of it. <clears throat> what are you kidding me, Mom? Crazy! You've got to be kidding me, Mom. <laughs> Shoot, <Sure> think. <laughs> oh 
Do you uh, think that I don't like cloths? This is all a ploy to give Matt the master bedroom because the producers want to get Matt out of the laundry room where they can keep an eye on him. He wins. You win. Thank hands you. down. That was great. At the end of the show, we have the rags to riches eviction ceremony, which is basically a spoof of Survivor's tribal council meeting. One of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence working for the man. I feel you, Matt. I've had the same expression on my face throughout this entire episode. All the votes are obviously fake, except for Matt, who votes for Molly to be evicted. Gina gets the boot, and we get a line that may just be better than the tribe has spoken. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Gina, you're dead to us. I really like this next part because it gave me a genuine laugh. While the host is still talking to the contestants, Gina can be heard losing her shit in the background. Or so as we continue. Can you stop telling me I'm done? But there are eight of you now. You're all one step closer to one hundred thousand dollars. And there you have it, the first episode of the Joe Schmo show. This was actually a lot of fun to rewatch. It may not have aged well, but isn't that the reason we watch reality TV for some cheap entertainment? I tried looking up the rest of the cast to see where they are now, but there isn't a lot to go on. Matt is apparently married now with two kids. Earl died in 2015, but continued to work on various projects until he passed. And Brian went on to become a producer for shows like The Ranch, The Neighborhood, The Goldbergs, and Mike and Molly. If you want more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe, because I really enjoy making these videos for you guys. And who knows, maybe we'll turn this into a series. If you want me to do more episodes of The Joe Schmo Show, let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, here's to hopefully a better year for all of us. Bye.